why was everybody looking at your shoes? They weren't that great. I'm the one that picked those out anyways. You have no idea how to dress. What do you know about fashion? They're always making you feel like, man, do I not know anything about fashion? Like, am I really not that great? You'd be shocked the things that you would think. Hey, babe. It's Asia Christina. <laughs> nice to meet you. This is Quality Queen Control. What is happening? Hello, angels. Welcome back to another episode. Are we watching me visually yet? So firstly, the elephant in the room is that, yes, my voice does sound a bit different and nasally because somehow I ended up with, I don't even know, a little bit of a cold where it's like my sinus, like my eyes are very glassy. Um, and whenever that happens, it's like, why not just throw in a ton of makeup, right? Also, by the way, what's trending in the makeup community right now are like no lashes. And I am living for it because... Who wants to put on lashes when you simply just don't have to? So I'm thinking like, should I get like a serum so we can try and like grow them long? Like, what are we going to do with the plan? I don't know yet. But in terms of updates, you guys know how I like to start out. So firstly, my god sister's birthday was, well, it is today as I'm filming this. By the time you guys see this, it'll be on Wednesday. But today is actually Sunday. And it was yesterday and we that we celebrated, although her birthday is today, the 23rd. And oh my gosh, I had the time of my life there. She did like a boat party type of thing. And then we did like a little after party situation. Needless to say, yes, I am running on less than four hours of sleep. Because let me tell you this about me. I am never the girl that comes home and I just plop in my bed. I do attribute this to the fact that I don't drink alcohol. And I also, I don't smoke, I don't drink, do anything. So it's like, no matter how tired I am, also I have type A personality traits I I must shower and do and like take off my makeup. I'm never gonna just sit in my bed. You shed dead skin cells when you go to sleep. Okay. I don't know if you knew that, but now you know. And especially if you're in the city. I was in Manhattan. Okay. When you're in Manhattan, I feel like the air is different and it's like seeping into my pores or something like that. And I have to scrub a dub dub that off of me. Okay. Needless to say. So I had a very fun weekend, but I was super tired. So I didn't end up going to bed. I got home around 3 30 AM. Then I had to pack my bag cause I knew I was filming today. Then I had to shower and then go to bed. And I don't know if it's just me, but I kind of call this like a lazy shower where I will shower and then I just won't lotion before I go to bed. And that's like a lazy shower for me. Cause it's like, I didn't lotion, but it's like, oh, whatever. Because I knew I was going to wake up and shower in the next four hours and then lotion for the day then. So yes. Now you guys, the feedback on my last video was so amazing. Have we been loving the visual pod? Okay. I mean, I feel so comfortable because it's such a relaxed environment. Like I got my little mic stand. Okay. And even though I'm sick, I'm still high energy. So yeah, I just didn't want to be like a Debbie Downer sort of thing, but which I'm not because I still feel fine. I'm grateful. I still have my health. All these things, they're very important. Practicing gratitude, things like that. But like I said, the feedback that I got was super amazing from you guys saying that you really enjoyed it and you wanted a part two. So here we are today. We are going to be doing part two of how to determine whether or not you are with a narcissist. Now, I did base... Uh, some of this off of a book that I reference quite frequently anytime I talk about NPD. And it is the book called Psychopath Free by Jackson McKenzie. And essentially, it's a self-help book that focuses on recovering from these emotionally manipulative type of dynamics. And there is, like I told you guys in the lab po last podcast episode, there is, uh, there are questions that she has that I want to go over. And then also we're going to talk about how to heal from these dynamics. Because like I said, I don't always want to talk about the problems. I want to offer a solution as well. So let's get on into it. One of the things that I love about this book is that it really encourages people to embrace self-compassion and self-empowerment. And essentially the goal is to break free from these emotional and psychological like, you know, situations, like the entrapment of these types of situations and these manipulative personalities that, you know, and help people re regain control of their life. And so before we dive into the test questions, I again, just want to 
offer a little brief overview and insight as to what this book is. Again, this book is called Psychopath Free by Jackson McKenzie. I think I'll link this in the show notes for you guys down below. I highly recommend you read it. And just also before we go further, no, I'm not a doctor. I'm not licensed or whatever. Let's just get that out the way before someone comments that. I feel like I have to say that because people are, you're not a doctor. Okay. Okay. But I'm still talking about it. Now what? Okay. Anyways, on to the next. So like I said, it's a very powerful and self-help type of guide that focuses on recovering from these emotionally abusive relationships with narcissists. A lot of the times we throw this around, we throw this buzzword around, narcissist, this person was a narcissist. But are they really? We're gonna figure that out today. So there are a bunch of questions that I wanna read for you guys that I think is really impactful to really ask yourself. And you know what? Worst case scenario, <clears throat> you might have some of these traits. And listen, I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to diagnose you. I'm just here to have a healthy and open conversation. Okay, let's do it. So one of the aspects that this book really emphasizes is understanding the traits and the behaviors of these toxic individuals. So in order to aid in recognizing these patterns, all right, there are a list of personality test questions. Does the person that you're with frequently exaggerate their achievements and talents? This, this question is specifically designed to pinpoint potential narcissistic traits because narcissists, they often inflate their accomplishments, right? They're always seeking admiration and validation from other people. Do they show a lack of empathy or disregard for the feelings and the needs of others? This question is very crucial because when you're identifying, you know, sociopathic type of tendencies, a lack of empathy is a very common characteristic of individuals with psychopathy or antisocial personality disorder. I love this. I like watching a lot of true crime. And there are so many times where, I mean, even like Jeffrey Dahmer, am I allowed to say that on here? Oh my gosh. I hope I don't get demonetized for saying that. But he had no empathy for the things that he was doing. He was like completely disassociated and he would talk about these things. Like it was a walk in the park. Like he was just brushing his teeth. Yeah, I, um, I, and I'm not even gonna go into detail cause I don't wanna get demonetized. But if you know Jeffrey Dahmer, everyone knows him. Like he was literally executed for all of the things that he did, the horrific crimes that he committed. And he would just talk about it like it was a walk in the park. And he wanted to get caught by the time he got caught. He was like, listen, I absolutely did do these things. And I genuinely can't tell you why for the life of me. Well, I just can't care. And sidebar, I watched his little documentary and it did kind of make me upset when his parents were fighting over the fact that they wanted his brain to be researched. I don't remember which parent he had that didn't want his brain to be researched, but I wanted it to be researched because I wanted to know what was in that head of his, but that's just me. Anyways, next question. Do they display an inconsistent or unpredictable emotional state? Oof, okay. Unstable emotions are the hallmark of certain personality disorders such as borderline personality disorder. And this question helps individuals identify possible emotional instability in their partner. There was a difference between this person just having, a, being in a bit of a mood, maybe they're going through something right now in life, so they tend to be a little, eh, type of life, you know, side of life, versus you cannot predict this person's mood. I could be wrong, but I think from my past research, that people that have borderline personality disorder, which is strictly environmental, because I don't believe that it's genetic, what they do is, how this is formed is through chaotic type of environments in their upbringing. So let's say they have an alcoholic parent and that parent is coming home and one day they're lovey-dovey with their child and their child is very receptive to that. We wanna be loved by our parents. And then the next day they come back and they're criticizing them and they're being abusive towards them, maybe physically, verbally, they start to curate or cultivate different personalities to cope with their guardian or their parents' behavior. And that's how that is formed. Personality, borderline personality disorder is formed. So needless to say, these people tend to have very extreme, grandiose reactions to the most minimal things. Like here's an example. Again, not sure if it ever happened, but here's just an example. 
you are dating someone, maybe you don't even know that they have this disorder. You just think that they're just like a very moody person and you're already walking on eggshells. You go to the grocery store and let's say your boyfriend texts you and says, hey, make sure you uh, stop by the cleaners on your way home. Or, and then he, or, or let's say he double texts you and he goes, uh, do you know what time you're going to be able to be back? You're bagging groceries, you know, and next thing you know, you come home and all your stuff's on the lawn. They have these very, very great, well, you didn't answer me, so um, I threw your stuff out because I just assumed maybe we weren't together anymore. You know what I mean? Like that type of thing. So you have to pay attention to things like that because that's a very unsettling type of feeling. And let me tell you this. I'll say this to the cows come home. Wrong man, wrong plan. Who you date, especially over the age of 25, is so crucial to your well-being, you know, even to be honest, how you are perceived by, by society and others, because it's like, hmm, not gonna lie, people are gonna, you know, do a little judgy judgy if they see that you're with someone maybe that isn't the best for you because they feel like, hey, this isn't a reflection of you. Now, that's not to make it right. I'm not saying that we should, but when you're past a certain age, and I'm not even talking in specifics to NPD, but I'm talking about just like, the, your run-of-the-mill type of things of being taken advantage of and cheating. Let me tell you this, guys. <clears throat> we don't know what we don't know. And oftentimes I find, let's take a little sidebar here. Oftentimes I find that whenever people are opening up and sharing their stories, I want you guys to actually put yourself in that person's shoes. Instead of being a couch critic and saying, well, I feel like this and I feel like you should have just done this. Because last time I checked... You're not being the you're not the one that's being paid for the consult. This is my channel in this context. And I'm just saying because I remember when I posted that video, the first time I noticed this, very seldom because it's very positive here in in my audience and I'm super grateful for that. All glory to God. Shout out to Jesus, my homie. Um I feel like people were saying things no matter how I'm a naturally diplomatic person. It's I don't try to be. It's just how I am. And no matter how many disclaimers I put in a video, people are saying the things that I already said. Like, for instance, not saying that this happened, but an example would be, hey, guys, just letting you know, I'm not a mental health expert. And someone will literally be like, you're not a mental health expert. Why are you talking about this? Or I'll say, oh, I did this because I thought, hey, it would be good for content. And people will comment and say, you could tell what part of the video they stopped watching by the things that they comment and they'll be like, girl, I feel like you out of all people should not have been with someone like that. And I get it. You guys put the people you see online on a pedestal. And so it's like maybe the way it reads is not the way that it's, you know, translating, you know, but be very, be very mindful. Okay. That you're, you are at the risk of becoming a couch critic when people are opening up. Let's say me for, for instance, I open up and I tell you guys a story time and you're in the comment section, girl, I feel like you liked him way more than he liked you. Da, 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 da. It's like, and if, even if so, what would you like me to say to that? What would you like me to say? There are certain ways that we can have healthy conversations. And listen, some of the things that YouTubers open up about or even people in your life open up about, you may have never encountered in your life. And as it pertains to MPD specifically, just for context purposes, these people tend to seek out very highly uh, you know, ambitious type of women. So if this is not something that let's say you've ever encountered before, then just try to be mindful of how you are commenting and things like that because it's unnecessary. And guess what? We can all point the finger until it happens to you. I digress. Let's proceed. So do they frequently make promises but fail to follow through? This question addresses the reliability and honesty, which can be a significant red flag in a toxic relationship. It's always, I was gonna, oh, but I didn't think you... And so you mean to tell me that you had this entire dialogue without my without me being present in it and you always are choosing the wrong decision at that? Is that what is that what we're saying here? I really just don't understand. Pay attention to things like that. Their words never following through. Now again, take this all with a grain of salt because again, these are the core 
questions that this person must embody majority of them. Because let's be honest here. If we were to take that one question and see if they frequently, you know, fail on their, on their promises, they're not following through, then we might as well call every man a narcissist. Okay. Because sometimes a little bit, a lot of the time, well, I guess if they wanted to, they will, but sometimes people, they do fall short on their promises. That doesn't necessarily make them a narcissist. Now, at the end of the day, right? You have to understand that if someone is not reliable with you, if you cannot simply have them keep their word, you have to know when to say, you know what? It's time for me to, it's time for me to make my exit. Because what are you going to do? You're going to be held captive in trying to figure out why am I not good enough? Why is it that they, I, you know, they refuse to do anything that I want them to do? Why is it that, and it's going to wear and tear and erode at your confidence on top of already being with people that are already like this. And it's really, really, it's harmful to your self-esteem. Now, that was just a brief little portion of divulging more into those personality questions as it pertains to NPD. What I really want to focus on in this episode is actually how to heal from people who are like this. Um, because this is a very serious thing. You know, um, anything that you experience, especially even when it comes down to infidelity, that is a very painful thing to endure. You add gaslighting on top of that and a personality disorder and oof, like you're down bad. You're down bad. So acknowledge the reality. You have to recognize that you were in a relationship with a narcissist and understand the impact that it had on your emotions and your self-esteem. These are things that have to be well thought through. Because let me tell you this, like I said, wrong man, wrong plan. Next thing you know, you're drinking, all of your, your, your triggers are coming out because you're inebriated, you're thinking without thinking, you don't want to talk about it because it's so overwhelming, but you also want to let it out and it's coming out, it's spilling out in ways that are unpredictable and you are isolating yourself and all these different things. That's another thing. If you're in a relationship with someone that all of a sudden, and I'm not talking about honeymoon phase because we all have a honeymoon phase where you have to be gentle with your friends, you get together with a guy and it's like, all you see is each other. And then you start to integrate into normal life. Now, I think as you get older, especially over the age of, I'd say, 27, I think the way you date matters. It, yes, there will be a little bit of a honeymoon phase, but like spending every waking moment with this person and you're, all of a sudden your entire friend group is eradicated, you want to watch that. You want to watch out for that to where someone is intentionally isolating you to the point where let's just say, and this is how guys, before we dive into the healing, sorry, this is how certain guys get you caught up in their store, in their, in their web and then their trap, because it's easy to get in very difficult to get out borderline impossible sometimes. Okay. Especially without professional help. They first disrespect you. Then depending on your reaction, they act like they're so sorry. Ah, da, 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 da. Then they turn around and they're like, all right, I still got her back. Now I can just act on consequence. So the next time, if, I, if what I did, I already like cheated on her and did all this stuff. I lived a double life. If I could get away with that, then I'm pretty so Here you are as the woman thinking, he not going to do it again, girl. He Really? Because this is how I think. If you try me once you might be crazy enough to try me again. And I will not give you the opportunity to do so. You're done, okay? Cut it, cut it, cut it. Yup, that's what we're doing. I don't play around with stuff like that. Of course, things depend on the offense, but when it comes to certain things like that that are very serious, and especially it's in the manner in how you do it, you're finished with me. Don't ever think. This is where we go wrong as women. We think, he not going to do it again, da, da, da. And yeah, maybe there are circumstances where maybe they don't do it again. Maybe they really are sorry. But in this context of people that have a personality disorder, oh baby, they will. It's called repeat offender. Because why? They don't have that empathy. They can mirror it, but they do not possess it. They don't feel it truly, integrally, genuinely. They can't. So anytime, and like I said, emphasis on how they do it, how you catch them in a lie, that is the key. That tells you whether or not you should give this person another chance. Because yeah, we can't cut off every single person. I understand that. 
but how they disrespect you is the defining factor, okay? So if someone's living a double life and you're thinking you have the upper hand because, ooh, I caught him, we had a whole discussion, he's not gonna do it again, he will do it and he'll get better and better at it. So don't get it twisted. So you have to think, if someone's gonna be bold enough to do something like that to you, let's say they're living a double life, ah, da, 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 and you think you have the upper hand by taking them back, now you have a discussion with your friends. You let your friend know, oh my gosh, me and so-and-so, we're no longer, I don't know what to do. And then next thing I know, we don't hear from you anymore. Now you don't want to talk to your friends anymore about the situation going on with you and your man. You know why? Because you already know what your friends are going to say. But part of you feels kind of bad because you feel a little bit embarrassed, but yet you haven't had enough. You still want to keep going. And unfortunately, some people do have to learn the hard way. And you have to just let them. You have to literally let them. Because like I spoke about in my friend's uh, friendship podcast, you can't throw away the baby with the bathwater. You know, you're going to be here. You were here before this clown and you'll be here when, when, when the curtains close. Okay? So at the end of the day, keep these things in mind. Because I really feel, I feel sorry for people that are in dynamics like this, especially when you encounter it for the first time too. Um, some people leave very early and they're very fortunate, right? And then other people, they stay stuck in it because they always want to know why, why, why? I think I could fix it. I think I could change something. What's going to be different? I think if I, you know what I mean? Again, you thinking you have the upper hand because you caught this person, you don't. They're just going to get craftier. That's what it is. And so now you have no one to open up to. Now, perfect floor, perfect table set for someone to use and abuse and manipulate you. And now you have no one to talk to about it because they've already isolated you from your friends. You feel crazy telling your friends that you're back with him. You don't want to talk about your relationship because you realize the one time you did, you, couldn't, you took him back after what you know is horrible. And you feel like, oh my God, everyone's going to judge you. Now, you should be able to talk to your friends about everything. You should. I know it's easier said than done, but you feel that embarrassment. So you don't want to have the conversation. And that's how they get you. That's how you get got. That's precisely how. Okay. Is when you go back after the blatant, blatant disrespect, thinking something's going to change. Next, set boundaries. Establish clear boundaries to protect yourself from further emotional harm. This means... Like we say, the no contact, right? Or very limit, limited contact with people that are narcissists if possible. I personally think, because based on my research, that's what it said, so I wanted to include it, but I think that it should be no contact. There is no such thing as winning with people that are like this because why? They do not have empathy. So they're, you're playing an unfair game, playing yourself, because you're playing with human emotions. They're on demon time. You cannot win with someone like that. They have no ceiling. So where are you going to go until you become a shell of yourself and you're sitting here trying to be vindictive or you're maybe like feeling down and you're just like shrinking yourself, shrinking yourself, shrinking yourself and you are, you're, you're not who you are anymore. You've adapted their lifestyle. You've taken on the things that they've wanted you to take on and all for what? All for what? Now you're in their vortex and now look at you. Okay. Three, seeking support. You should reach out to your friends, your family, maybe a support group. No one said you have to blast it on Facebook to share your experiences and your feelings. And talking to others will help to provide validation for you and also help you feel less isolated. This is very important because you are not alone in the situation. It is not just you. No, you were not crazy. Yes, this person was gaslighting you. And there's a lot of things to undo because what I find so interesting about narcissists is they are so skillful at completely erod like eradicating your confidence in yourself. You no longer make decisions for yourself because now you're second guessing yourself because you're always going back and thinking, where did I go wrong? How did I end up in this specific circumstance? And how could this happen to me? You know that song um, by Ke 
what is it, Carrie Helson. And it was like, oh, man, not again. This ain't supposed to happen to me. A keep rocking, a keep knocking. Now you know that song? Okay, well, anyways. So, yes, I think this is very important to seek help. And you know what? Sometimes this is goes into my point number four, which is therapy or counseling. I actually think this is even better. Yes, it's nice to vent to your friends and let them know. But listen, Maybe sometimes you don't want all your friends to know the, the, the like trauma that you've gone through. How about you dump profession, you know, to a professional and they can allow, they can give you advice from a professional standpoint on how to deal with these types of situations, how to validate, they're going to validate the things that you've gone through and, and give you that open dialogue and that freedom to say whatever it is you want to say and offer you sound advice in return so that you can better help yourself and also give you rational coping mechanisms because we are human beings. We all have coping mechanisms. And so again, for one, it could be drinking. Okay. It could be eating a lot. It could be anything. It could be over exercising. It could, anything in excess is too much. Be mindful of what your mechanisms are because that is where you're going to lean on as a crutch. And if you keep the crutch, you stay injured. You guys know, I always say this, you keep the crutch, you stay injured. You have to let it go. Because at some point, you have to set yourself free. Because guess what, babe? Whenever you decide to break free, it's going to hurt. Feel it now. Feel it tomorrow. Feel it next year. You're still going to feel it. And it's going to feel exactly the same. Delaying this is not smart. It's not. But there is a, there is a little time frame where you have to give yourself a little bit of grace where it's like, all right, I'm ready to tackle this now after giving myself, you know, the time to be in denial about whatever happened to me, which does happen. So therapy or counseling, like I said, and consider speaking to a professional that can help from a therapist's point of view that has experience in dealing with narcissistic abuse, okay? And like I said, it will provide you with the proper tools for coping and healing. Next is self-care. Ooh, priority, 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 priority. Because now this is where your friends start to come in, all right? And this is where you can kind of group your friends in, where I was talking about in point number three, seeking support from your friends. Now is the time to let your friends in after you were gone for X amount of time and let them know exactly what was going on. No one said to give them the whole rundown because you may not want to because it was a lot and you don't even know where to begin. You don't even know where to start. However, it is so important to start to let your friends know this is why I was gone. It's not necessarily because I chose this person over you. This is what I was dealing with and this is why this happened to me. And if that person is your friend, they're not going to be like, girl, I don't care. You shouldn't have did it. No, they're going to say, wow, I love you anyway. And I'm sorry that that happened to you. And I'm here if you ever want to talk about it. But I definitely do suggest, you know, therapy, someone professional, because they can offer you advice professionally that I simply can't. And that's just the truth. So I think that that's a really great way. That's a part of the self-care is to prioritize yourself. What do you want to do now? Because all everything you're, if you've been in a dynamic like this has always been what that person wanted to do. Their time, their schedule, you know, their choices, their wants, their needs, everything is them, 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 them. And you were just an, uh, uh, an addition to the play. Okay. So what do you want to do? Prioritize the self-care activities that promote well-being, such as exercise, hobbies, paint and sips, okay? I'm going to sip on a little mocktail, okay? Paint and sip on it, okay? Spending time with supportive people, praying, getting in touch with your spiritual side. Now is the time to anchor yourself in something that's actually real. Because as you can see, little boy over there, he wasn't it. You see that? See how that happens? But when you do it the right way and you anchor yourself in Jesus, in God, then we won't run into that circumstance. Now, I'm not saying there's not going to be times where you're not going to be sad. You're not going to be discouraged. It happens to me too. But truthfully, nothing else has been more fulfilling to me and more sustainable for me because every other thing was fleeting. Every single other thing was just fleeting and it wasn't sustainable. But the word, 
of God, AKA my Bible. I talk to you guys about reading Bible plans all the time. That was the main thing that has been sustainable for me. Oh, by the way, guys, we are what? 283 days into my Bible streak. Mm, give me my flowers. Yes. Yeah, girl. Mm, I cannot wait until it says 365 because that means I was reading my Bible consistently. I never missed a day for a year. It's an accomplishment. I'm really proud of myself. So <laughs> I'm very happy about that. Now, point number five, back to what I was saying, self-care, prioritizing the self-care activities, like I said, and having those hobbies, you know, you can meditate, you can meditate on God's word. No one said you have to go, hmm, ha, la, la, la. no one said you have to do all of that, but meditating on God's word. Okay. It's a very possible thing. You can do it. And before people go, I don't know how to do that. YouTube is free. You watching this right now, it's free. You can simply Google. Everything is at our fingertips. It's at our fingertips, okay? What is that? Hey, uh, that's what that reminded me of I'm just now. <laughs> I always get sidetracked by songs. Number six, educate yourself about narcissism. The second that I encountered someone that had, I believe, traits of narcissism, I don't necessarily know if he had MPD, but child, he was definitely on a spectrum. <laughs> okay? He was on the spectrum. And ever since then, it became a passion project of mine. I mean, I used to, when I first discovered that book, Psychopath Free by uh, Jackson McKenzie, I used to go to like this place in my neighborhood in like a village and I would sit at the bar by myself drinking a uh, ginger ale. I was drinking a lot of ginger ale at that time. I've switched over. I'm more of like a cranberry and seltzer girl now. Mm, yeah. And I'm more of like a ginger beer girl now. Mm, yeah. So I do that. I do ginger beer when I'm feeling extra spicy because I consider that drinking for me. Like if I'm going out drinking, I'm drinking ginger beer, you know? Um, because the sugar content gets me like, you know what I mean? Like it's just, pff, I don't know. I'm just a very sensitive to sugar and caffeine person where it don't take much to get me like going, you know? Okay, don't take that the wrong way. Anyways, so <laughs> that was weird. Um, so yes, you want to learn about narcissism, okay? Educate yourself about narcissistic personality disorder to better understand the dynamics of the relationship and the reasons behind the narcissist behavior. Baby, that is your closure. That is your closure. You're not going to get answers. This man has shed his skin and he's on to the next. Or maybe this woman, if you're listening to this and you're a man, maybe the woman that you are with, she has shed her skin and she's on to the next victim. They are empty shelves. They take on personal, they reflect your behavior to you. That's why in the beginning you feel, and I'm going to link the videos that I made because I talk way more in depth about this. I took very, very in-depth notes and I already made two YouTube videos diving into this book so deep because I'm so passionate about it, like last year. So I will put that in the show notes below so that you guys have that as reference where I go into way more detail. But that is how these people get you. They mirror back qualities that they know you like. Oh, you look like you would like something like that. So they, they come in as Mr. Perfect. You know, they give you the flowers. They take you out to the nice dinner dates. They are always planning things with you. And then a month in, you turn around and it's like, where did that person go? That person no longer exists. And naturally, if you're a sane human being, you're trying to chase back what once was, but it's gone because it never existed. That was just them mirroring back to you what they feel would draw you in. You understand? This is why it's so easy to get got. You don't think if you're sitting here trying to be a couch critic that you are... Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Exempt from encountering someone like this. Half of you probably already have. And you sitting here projecting in the comment section. I don't think so. Be humble. Sit down. So anyways, like I said, it's very important to educate yourself. Like I said, read the book Psychopath Free by Jackson McKenzie. Uh, watch a bunch of YouTube videos. There are so many educational resources that we have for free. Um, not the book. I don't believe the book is free. Uh, but how, however, there are tons of books online, et cetera, et cetera. You guys know if you want to find something, you will find it. Number seven, practice self-compassion. I know it's so easy to think like, oh my goodness, like how could this happen to me? I'm so stupid. And you're just replaying these events back in your head because it's almost like, <laughs> it's like when you go to the gym and you turn around, and you're just looking at yourself and you're going, um, whose body is this? Because it's not mine. 
and I don't know how I got here, then you start working out and you're feeling like so like lousy and then you're like, ugh, like you just get discouraged because you realize how far you are from where you want to be. And I've been there a million times over in a bunch of different scenarios. And so you just start to get, very, you vacillate between ha fight, having the fighting courage to proceed and moving on and fighting the good fight versus whatever, it's useless. If I'm here, I might as well stay here. And to that I say, you drop your cell phone. You're going to keep dropping it till it breaks open and say, well, since I dropped it once, might as well keep breaking it till I don't even have a phone anymore. No, you're not. So don't do that with yourself. Remember that analogy. It's so important to be kind with yourself and to avoid the self-blame. This is not your fault. Healing takes time. And it is essential to be patient with yourself during the process. You have to be. Yes. Weirdly enough, this is human psychology. Ding dong. For all the people, like, I know I'm a tough love. You guys know, if you follow me, you know I'm a tough love person. But I also, one of my strengths is that I do have compassion. I would never have considered myself, if you know me personally, not what you see online, watch it. But if you know me personally, you know how I am. If you've done consults with me, you also know how I am. As I'm doing things that are tailored to you guys, it's a lot different. When I'm on YouTube, I'm giving generalized advice. And on my podcast, like for the most part, I'm giving generalized advice. But you guys message me. I always, you know, speak to you guys and, I, and I'm very compassionate because at the end of the day, yes, we need a little tough love in order to be the catalyst for change because you can't coddle everybody into, you know, changing because if they're comfortable, they're not going to move. You have to get uncomfortable. Even in situations like this, it has to get so bad where sometimes you erode at your self-esteem and the dynamic has completely just made you a shell of yourself that that's when you have to turn around and you have to fix it. And I understand it's like 10 steps forward and 100 back sometimes, but you keep going and you keep going forward. So I completely understand and I want to emphasize the fact that you have to be compassionate with yourself and patient with yourself during the process. No matter how long your dynamic was, double that time probably that it's going to take you to heal from it. If you're lucky, it'll happen sooner because you know why? It's all in your control. Take control. Take your control back. Take your power back and say, listen, I'm in charge of my life. I'm in charge of my life. Who was that person before? That person didn't know what that person didn't know. And that's okay. Rebuilding your self-esteem, okay? Engage in activities that boost your self-esteem and confidence. Celebrate your strengths and your accomplishments. Because more than likely, if you were with someone that was narcissistic, they are condescending. They demean every single thing that you accomplish because everything you do to them, it doesn't matter. So you, you, you thought you were cool? Why was everybody looking at your shoes? They weren't that great. I'm the one that picked those out anyways. You have no idea how to dress. What do you know about fashion? They're always making you feel like, man, do I not know anything about fashion? Like, am I really not that great? You'd be shocked the things that you would think. When you're down bad, you're down bad. And you have to be empathetic towards that. So when it comes to engaging in activities that boost your self-esteem and your confidence, I wanted to talk about confidence too in my next podcast episode. So drop me down a little comment down below if you want me to make a, an episode on confidence. Why do I feel like this is giving series? It's giving series. But I don't know how long it's going to be, but like in terms of like the series duration, but it's giving series. Anyways, so it's really important to do things that really bring out the best in you because, you know, you've been like down in the dumps for X amount of time. And so bring, and at first it's going to feel like, do I even believe these things? Because you've been battered down. But when you're constantly around people that are going to lift you up, lift you up. And when you pray about it too, number one, you're going to believe who God says that you are at the end of the day. That's what you're going to believe. That, that core fundamental is all the confidence that you need. Confidence of a mustard seed. They say faith of a mustard seed, but all you need is confidence of a mustard seed as it pertains to what reading your Bible and being who God says that you are. Try that. That's why I say going that route is way more sustainable. That's what it is. So focusing on personal growth. Now it's about you. It's you time. Use this experience as an opportunity 
for growth and self-discovery. Set new goals and aspirations for yourself. Because before, your life was all about Mr. What is, what is happening. And now it's like, what do I want to do? And you'd be shocked how long you can go without ever considering yourself because you're so engulfed in someone else's nonsensical nonsense. This is you time to sit here and ask yourself, what do I want to do? What brings me joy? What makes me happy? And sometimes the easiest thing to identify to be able to answer these questions, what did you enjoy doing when you were younger before society told you who you should be, what you should be doing? what they think would be a better career for you? Who is that person? Ask yourself that. It is in these little activities, like for instance, I'm not saying I'm gonna create a career out of coloring books, but I love to color. I have adult coloring books. I even have apps on my phone where I color. And it brings out this, I don't know, sort of whimsical side of myself that I really appreciate. Uh, Pinterest, if you're a woman, we love a good Pinterest. They knew what they were doing when they created that app. Create a mood board for yourself. Create a vibe for yourself. Look at these inspirational images. You can be anything you want to be if you truly believe it. And I watch people. I watch inspiration all the time, motivational speakers. And at first, it feels so outside of you because you're just so far from where it is that you want to be. But these are all planting the seeds for your personal growth. I started my personal growth journey in 2017. So the irony that my channel started in December of 2018 and all the things I was doing, the seeds I was planting, like even to this day, I still go to sleep with some sort of meditation on, you know, of saying like, I am powerful. I am rich. I am successful. I am loved. I am, I am who God says I am. Like all these different things. I go to bed every single night. If you ask Hale, when I go to her house and I spend the night at her house, I always have something on to program my mind to fill whatever, wherever there's a void, something's going to fill it. You have the choice to figure out what that something is, who that someone is. Figure that out for yourself and get used to, and this is why I say therapy is so important because sometimes we tend to get hypervigilant where all of a sudden, because these people have eradicated because these people have eradicated at your confidence and your self-esteem, you feel like you don't know who to trust because you feel like you can't even trust yourself. You can't even trust your own judgment. And that is a lie from the pits of hell. Because, listen, you don't know what you don't know. So be gentle with yourself. And lastly, my point number 10, avoid new toxic relationships. Do you know how they say a way to get over somebody is to get into someone else? The blood of Jesus. No, that's not true. That's not true. Especially when it comes to dynamics like this, that is absolutely false. You need to take time to heal. It's not the time to be some sort of serial monogamous and think like, oh, I'm just going to get over him and like just get with someone else. Because if you don't heal who hurts you, you will bleed onto those who haven't cut you. Fix it. Fix it. Jesus. How about that? That's what we need to do. And, and when you're in this vulnerable state where you've just gotten out of this dynamic, spiritually, you're not at your best. So you are actually going to be susceptible to meeting the wrong types of people because where you are spiritually or like vibrationally, as people say, you will attract the wrong person. That's just the truth. So be cautious of people that have these potential red flags in future relationships and prioritize healthy boundaries. No means no, and yes means yes. So all in all, in conclusion, I want you guys to remember that healing from a narcissistic relationship, it's a process and it takes time. So you should not hesitate in any way to seek professional help for something like this. I highly suggest this because your friends are your friends. They can only allow you to vent but so many times, but how are they going to actually give you the healthy coping mechanisms besides say the obvious, girl, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. Just like ignore him. Just like don't talk to him again. Did you look at his Instagram again? Ugh, you always do this. Like, girl, seriously, like you're really hurting yourself. Like, don't do it. No, like you should hear a professional saying, listen, 
to validate the things that you were going through, yeah, he was gaslighting you here. Yeah, this was reactionary, you know, type of, you know, this was a typical reaction that a narcissist would have when you say XX next. That's what I'm talking about. So that is the end of this podcast episode. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Leave a comment down below if you guys want to see a video on confidence next, a podcast episode on confidence. Uh, it's so hard while I'm filming this to speak like as though I'm on audio and also a video at the same time. <laughs> it's like, ah, I'm adjusting. But needless to say, I'm so happy that you're spending time with me. I really appreciate it. And for those of you, of course, my extra special angels, yes, I said it, that are watching me and listening to me, I want to give a special shout out to one of my subscribers named Hannah. Hannah, you know who you are. I see every comment that you write. I do see when you message me on Instagram and everything. I want to give a shout out to you because you are always so supportive. You're so encouraging. You're so uplifting. And Hannah is just an example of all the other amazing supporters that I have. But there are certain people that I, because of how often they engage with me, that I notice and I know them by name. So Hannah, if you're seeing this, I want you to know that I love you and it doesn't go unnoticed. With that being said, angels, thank you so much for listening to me, for watching me. And I will speak to you beautiful angels in my next podcast episode. Mwah.